I'm Faisal Kazi, President and CEO of Siemens Canada. We have a, a long history in Canada. We stood for engineering excellence, innovation, uh, reliability and quality for since 1912 when the company was formed. So we provide solutions in the area of electrification, uh, automation and digitalization in almost all the key sectors in Canada. Uh, Siemens and its affiliates uh, employ around 5,000 uh, people uh, coast to coast in Canada. We have 44 uh, office locations and uh, nine production facilities in Canada. We're very strong and very focused on sustainability. So we have committed here in Canada to become carbon neutral by 2030. So talking about future investments, uh, we are investing quite a bit. Historically, we've been investing uh, around 50 million in research and development in this country. Uh, uh, we have two global center of competences, uh, one being uh, the cybersecurity center, which is in Fredericton, and also in Fredericton, we have the smart grid uh, global center of competence. And in this uh, center, we are creating together with our partners, uh, New Brunswick Power and Nova Scotia Power, uh, this the grid of the future. So it's a very, very exciting $92 million R&D project. It's funded uh, by the Strategic Innovation Fund from the federal government with $36 million. Uh, so very, very exciting uh, uh, technology is being developed, which will not only be used in Canada, uh, but we hope to also export this technology around the world. Then we also work very closely with Emission Reduction Alberta. Uh, we have uh, we are working on a waste heat recovery technology in the oil and gas sector, which could take uh, the waste heat and create power from it. So that's another investment we do. We work closely and we are going to invest even more with the government of Quebec uh, in their four industry 4.0 innovation hubs. So Siemens is uh, really investing in providing state of art technology in these hubs, uh, which will help support the SMEs uh, in Quebec to bring their production facilities into the into the next uh, next generation. Uh, very excited about our investments in the transportation sector. As I said, we are working together with the transit agencies uh, across Canada to electrify uh, their their the bus the buses, uh, but also investing heavily in the the large transit projects uh, which which have been announced uh, in, uh, announced in Canada. So a lot of investment uh, going in uh, into Canada. I feel, you know, when you talk about foreign direct investment, the first thing uh, any company like ours would look uh, is, you know, the basics, the, the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are basically the political environment and the economic environment and the infrastructure. So I think political environment, uh, we are number two in the world, extremely stable. Uh, we have a diverse and an inclusive uh, economy. Uh, and, uh, you know, Forbes uh, have rated uh, Canada as uh, the number six uh, as the best countries to do business in. Out of 153 countries, we are number two in G7. And there is quite a modern infrastructure and more is being invested. So all the basics, the fundamentals of FDI are very strong in, in Canada. What makes Canada even more attractive uh, is the availability of skills. So, you know, 55% of citizens have post-secondary education, uh, which makes Canada, you know, really the most uh, educated population in the world. And that availability of talent is a key criteria. So uh, this is very, very strong. What we also have is the free trade agreement. So we have the UMCA or the old NAFTA. Uh, we have the, the CETA with Europe, and then we have the CPTPP uh, with Asian countries and, and bilateral agreements with many countries in South America. So this makes, you know, with all these free trade agreements is a big strength, I think a unique. What my favorite, play, uh, you know, strength for Canada is, uh, you know, it's a great country to live in. It's inclusive, uh, it's multicultural, and it has a very interesting immigration policy. And this is very, very valuable for a company like Siemens because we have the ability when we work together with the government to get work permits for our global talent and bring them to Canada within a matter of weeks. And this is, no, I have not seen any country offering that. So we have, create, this creates the ability for us to create multi, 
uh, you know, faceted multi cross country teams into one uh, location which has a very good infrastructure. Of course, what I also see is Canada is very progressive. Canada is aiming to be take global leadership in the new economy. Uh, this is very attractive for us, especially when we are investing in smart grid or digital enterprise or cyber security. And the government is very cooperative. I, I must say federal as well as provincial, uh, there is appetite for investment in innovation and it's proven, uh, just as I said, our smart grid project. So there's a lot of positives uh, in Canada and uh, I think it's a great place to invest and we will continue to invest here. I feel the good thing about Canada's uh, innovation ecosystem is that it's based on collaboration. It's collaboration between the governments, uh, between the, crown, uh, the utilities or the crown corporations and the universities, and then the private sector. And, and this is extremely important because if we want to solve the bigger challenges in this world, we have to co-create solutions. And this is uh, something uh, which is Canada's strength, this, you know, inclusiveness and the spirit of collaboration to develop new things. So I, I feel uh, the ca Canadian uh, innovation environment is uh, very strong. And we have, you know, especially the talent and if the future economy talent uh, you see in Canada, uh, like, for example, in Montreal or in Toronto, the AI hubs. So we are, you know, really, really advancing uh, uh, here and we are in a, in a good space, I would say. I would uh, start with the inf uh, infrastructure uh, sector. And I think we all uh, now realize with this change uh, which COVID has brought upon us, that we have to rethink buildings, how you, we use buildings, uh, how can we make buildings smarter, how can we make buildings safer. So I think there, is some, uh, there needs to be a lot of investment uh, in this infrastructure. Then we also see the, the electrification of the transportation sector with the buses, not only the buses, but also the electric cars. So there's a whole infrastructure required to ensure that the transportation sector can efficiently, you know, make the switch from fossil, from petrol economy into the electric uh, vehicle economy. So that, that there's, there will be a lot of scope. There's investment in the transit system, a large projects that we announced. So that's, I think, where I'm really bullish about the infrastructure sector. Uh, what is also very interesting is, I think, the energy sector. Uh, we have, uh, you know, there is a lot of change. Uh, the energy transition is happening. There's a lot of focus of, on renewables. Uh, Canada has uh, uh, has committed to reduction of uh, greenhouse gases. So there, I think that the digital technology and smart technologies, this was going to be a very attractive market, but also new technologies like uh, like hydrogen. So there, there I feel uh, very, very excited about. And of course, uh, the industrial sector. That is also very interesting because I feel we have a lot of small and medium uh, enterprises, which are production facilities. And if you compare our SMEs with the global manufacturing companies, I do feel, and this has been also shown in some reports, that Canada is lagging behind when it comes to technology, when it becomes, comes to industry 4.0. So there is work to be done. I think it's also an opportunity now to use as COVID has fast-tracked digitalization by a couple of years to you know, invest in that sector and we would be hoping, and as Quebec is already doing, uh, I think others will also follow. So that, uh, this, that's the third sector I would be very excited about. And all helping decarbonization. You have touched on a very important topic. Uh, cybersecurity is a big challenge, uh, but it will, it's also a big opportunity. Uh, we see the cost of cybersecurity attacks at about 600 billion US dollars. That's one person of the global uh, GDP. So it's a big challenge. And by the end of this year, 20 billion devices uh, will, be, will be connected to the internet of things. Yeah, so there's a huge, uh, huge surge in connectivity, huge surge in digitalization. 70% uh, 
more investment, the big companies are investing 70% more versus previous year into IoT technologies. So where we see the opportunities, seem, uh, Canada has a very strong, I think, regime when it comes to cybersecurity. Our federal government has come up with a, with a policy, so we are in a good space there. But where we see as a big opportunity is uh, there's been a lot of work done on cyber, IT cybersecurity. So when we split cybersecurity into two parts, the IT, that's your computer, that's your data, but then we call OT, and that's about the critical infrastructure. So how do we protect as our power plants, as our industries, as our signaling systems are being connected to the Internet of Things? How will we protect them? Because if there is a cyber attack on a critical infrastructure, the consequences are much bigger as compared to the IT cyber. So that's the, where the opportunity is. So we chose uh, New Brunswick, uh, Fredericton, as the cent uh, global center of competence there. Uh, and it's, it was a very natural choice. As I said, we have a global smart grid center of competence. Smart grid is all about connecting the, the, the critical infrastructure of the utility uh, to the, uh, through cloud platforms. And so it was a natural choice, and this has to be very secured, and that's why we put the cybersecurity. And of course, we are, and I would say, just like with Canada, very happy with the ecosystem in New Brunswick. Uh, there is, a, you know, very supportive government uh, uh, support. Uh, there's a, a very uh, innovative uh, crown corporations like New Brunswick Power. Uh, we have a good S uh, presence of the SMEs who are willing to participate in this uh, energy transition. So, so all in all, a very good ecosystem. Now coming to Canada, how is cybersecurity, in, uh, you know, uh, how can Canada leverage, you know, this growth in cybersecurity? I feel Canada is in a good place, one, because of the collaborative nature uh, of ecosystems which we have in Canada, but I do feel that maybe our biggest, uh, uh, let's say, se uh, selling position for Canada is uh, is the, the the political stability and the neutrality of the com uh, of the of the country because uh, I we have experience uh, working together with corporations around the world uh, when it comes to cybersecurity and uh, uh, there is a large sensitivity about where the data will go and in which location the cyber operating center would be and I feel Canada is a very good uh, stable political country proven in the COVID crisis to, to take that uh, role uh, uh, for the world. I think foreign direct investment uh, on a high level brings us closer to the world. You know? So it creates, uh, it creates jobs in Canada. Like uh, just to give you an example, every one job which Siemens Canada creates, they have four additional jobs created in the economy. You know? So if a large companies are investing into Canada, uh, it's good for the prosperity of the country. It brings us together. The other important element uh, which are the investors feel that Canada is a very diverse country. So we have, you know, even if you look at the GTA area, more than 50% of the people uh, were not born here. They have come from outside. So there is a very good awareness about foreign countries and foreign cultures uh, in Canada. So when we are investing here and working on a global center, we have people from all over the world. So if we are doing business in, let's say, Brazil, we have many members in our team who have come or migrated to this country from Brazil. So, they, so you know, they fully understand uh, the dynamics in those countries. So that, that I think, uh, really brings us closer. Uh, that's what we stand for, inclusivity and diversity. And FDI not only creates economic benefits, but also social benefits, I feel. Mm -hmm.